Hi, I'm the Mini Painting Noob, and I have finally finished painting the board game Shadows Over Camelot. The paints that I used was a mix of Army Painters Speed Paint and some Vallejo Metallics, and uh, underpainted with um, Army Painters uh, Rattle Cam Paints. And so in this video I just want to show what I did and give sort of my final thoughts on the paints used, specifically the speed paints. Um, I am a new painter. Um, this is the second board game that I've painted. Uh, the first being uh, the Grim Forest. Those figures were much bigger. And so these were the first 30mm, uh, I think they are 30mm or 32mm scale figures that I've painted. Uh, so we'll go through each one and see how I did. So let's start with King Arthur. And I've got the uh, what they should look like cards versus the what actually happened. So we can see, you know, color wise, I didn't do too bad. I mean, reds and silver, a bit of gold, and close up. So here I did a uh, Vallejo silver undercoat um, that's over the top of a Zenithal prime, but there's so much silver, the Zenithal didn't uh, come through that much. And uh, the gold is actually the Vallejo Bronze. And then I went over all of the metallic with uh, Runic Grey for this guy. So it's sort of a blue, blue-gray shading on all of the uh, metals. Um, and then his only other color really is the red. So for that one, I hit him with some blood red, um, and it was just a single coat of blood red. And I just made sure that it pulled nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of brown behind the shield. Um, so this was one of the easier figures. Um, the, I think the most challenging bit was the lining, the bronze lining on the armor. Um, and the dragon, so getting that black in. Uh, so what I did there was um, pretty much just filled in the whole shield black with, I think I used the Vallejo black there. Um, and then I uh, dry brushed white over the dragon. And uh, once the once it was all white, nice and bright, um, I just went over with the red and that sort of made that pop. So yeah, just one last look at him. I'm really happy with how he turned out. And he was super quick to colour in once the um, shading had all been done. Shading and metallics took the longest time. Alright, on to Sir Gawain. Focus there. So he is the green figure. There we go. It's a bit of golds and greens. So what we did for him so again is a fair amount of metallic. Um, he was a straight zenithal and then metallic over the uh, the upper body areas and feet. And then, uh, what do we got? Orc skin for the green areas. And then his other main color was the gold. So for that I used the Vallejo gold. Uh, his weapon is the bronze. Oops, oops here it is. Um, and he's got a bit of uh, the, oh, what have we got? The Crusader, bit of Crusader skin and um, his beard. I can't remember what uh, grey I used for his beard. It might actually be holy white. Um, just a bit of shading there. Uh, and then the leathers. Um, Pretty much all of the figures have got leather work 
of hardened leather and that just works really well. It's a very nice leather for straps and bags and also dark wood. Looks like his belt might be a bit darker. So, um, yeah, I'm not a f too much of a fan of this, uh, the miniature, but I think I did a fairly okay job, I think, painting him. Um, oh, the metallic, uh, so over the silver would be, uh, looks like this one, Grey Lord Grey. So it's a darker, um, blacker colour for all of the, overall the metallics than the previous. So that is Sir Gawain. Next we have Sir Galahad. So this is the yellow figure. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to focus on this guy. Alright, so the yellows, you don't have too much of an option with yellows with the speed paint. Um, there is the zealot yellow, uh, that is way too bright a yellow for um, what this figure needed. What I did use though was malignant green. This turned out really nice and is a pretty close colour match actually to uh, the colour from the game. So he is malignant green rather than just a straight yellow. Um, so again, uh, similar metallics to the previous with just the silver and then Gravelord Grey over. And uh, he's got two two-tone browns and a bit of black in the decorating of that sword. Uh, so that would be a mix of um, the hardened leather and a bit of the dark wood. I think I thinned the dark wood down a bit with the speed paint medium. So it's not as dark on their tunic. So it just thins it down and just makes it not quite, uh, not quite as dark. And then the black in here would be grim black, um, and then that leather crisscrosses. Then the shield, um, the metallic for that, you see, it's a little bit brighter silver. I uh, went over that with the runic grey. Uh, so it just gets that different different tone silver there. I think this guy turned out really nicely. Um, I like the unicorn thing on his chest there. Turned out quite nice. Um, you can see the zenithal on the cape. It gets darker at the bottom. Otherwise all the other shading is including in here is all from the speed paint pooling. Not bad. So next one is Sir K. The blue figure. Um, this was quite a challenge to get a decent blue. Um, so I went over the cloak a couple of times and reset. Uh, so initially I used um, High Lord Blue, uh, it was just a bit patchy and I didn't like uh, the colour that it came out. So I ended up um, dry brushing white over it and then changed to using the Magic Blue instead. They look fairly similar. Um, this has a, the highlights, the white highlights come through a bit easier in uh, the Magic Blue. Um, so it just, it looks just a little bit smoother, so um, so yeah, I changed the cloak to magic blue. Otherwise, um, he is a the head sculpt is not very good. Uh, not a fan of his face, but there's not a lot I can do about that unless I do a micro level painting. So that's just straight. Uh, Crusader skin over the top and it sinks into the recesses and shades it. He's got the um, leather 
colored here. Um, there's a bit of uh, gold on the sword. Um, what else? These little swords here uh, on the cape, those are really, really difficult to get to. Uh, so I'm not particularly happy with how they turned out. Um, but he will do. And then the shield. So I've gone with, uh, there's obviously no picture of the shield, so it's totally up for interpretation on what colours to use. So I chose a, sort of a leatherback shield with a golden horn. So yeah. Alright, next one was Sir Tristan. Sir Tristan, yep. So he is purples, um, so there we have it. There we go. So uh, I went quite dark with the um, metallics. Um, we got here so he's got um, the tunic he's wearing is multiple layers of different colors so I started with a thinned uh, was it thin dark wood over the entire thing then I went over the straps with hardened leather and then these seams I went over them with um, a thinned down Hive Dweller Purple, um, and so it gives that the seams that purple look. The cloak um, is also a thinned down Hive Dweller Purple, so that's sort of one drop, you know, one big drop purple to a couple of drops of the medium to thin that down. Uh, it looks a bit uh, washed out, it could probably be brighter. In terms of a colour match, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, just brown on the back of the shield. The shield detail, we've got silver and purple. The back, a hey, black background. He's got the Crusader skin face. Um, you, know, you can see the tunic detail a bit better there. So that was just layering. Um, I don't want to get too detailed, so just one coat of brown over the whole thing, and then I lay it on the details. And that spear as well, as that's the uh, dark wood for the spear handle, and then the runic grey for the metallics. Um, the metallics for his armour is a Gravelord grey. Just a few more to go. We've got Sir Percival, probably one of the most boring of the characters to paint. Um, it's pretty much just silver, you know, you know metallics, um, face and hair and a belt. Um, so not a lot to say here. So he's the hardened leather, uh, sorry, he hardened leather belt, Gravelord Grey over the armour. Gave him a sort of a green accent for the scarf he's wearing. His face is, again, the skin and then the just a leather. I think I might have added a bit of orange into the hair. Um, then his cape is pretty much just zenithal and dry brushed white. Um, so, not a lot to say there. Then, the last one is Sir Palmides. I don't know if you're pronouncing, if I'm pronouncing any of these right. This guy was quite a challenge for that checkerboard. It's not perfect, but uh, the checkerboard shield there. Um, I didn't get a very good color match on the armor, the golden armor either. I went way too yellow on the gold. Um, and I've had to sort of darken it and tone it down, uh, which means it's more of a dark orange now. Let's get close.
closer up on him. So I'm happy with the figure. He's not quite a match um, to the picture. It's just that those uh, golden bits, including sort of his ankles and um, his turban and everything, is just a little bit too dark orange. But the armor and everything just looks really nice. He's got some really nice details. The checkerboard could have been a bit cleaner. Uh, it's very difficult to paint perfect squares. Um, but yeah, there we go. And for the... Uh, obviously wearing a bandana. Uh, that is the runic grey again, just to give it some shading and depth to it. Right, so then there are a few other figures represented here. So those were all the knights. We have got the Excalibur. Uh, the main problem I had with these three little mini ones is the plastic. It's a kind of a rubber rather than a normal plastic and it reacted to the um, primer I was using. And um, so it just took a bit of effort to get paint to actually stick to these. I sort of primed and then I clear coated and then I was able to paint over the clear coat um, and they've looked okay since doing that. Um, so the paint I've used for the waves, I think it's waves, watery waves, is plasmatic bolt and I think I dry brushed a bit of white over it as well just to make uh, it pop just a wee bit more. Um, he has got a, some armor on that hand so that is just uh, metallic silver with some Gravelord Grey. I've got a hand there which is the Crusader skin and it goes up gold sword and the tip so and then they're just shaded um, yeah, so that's that one. We've got the Lancelot's armor. I'm very happy with how this guy turned out. Um, there aren't any color representations of what this is supposed to look like in any of the imagery in the rule book, so I sort of made something up. So I've done a leather wrapped sword sheath there. A little bit of leather coming down on the shield, plain fronted shield. Uh, we've got a kind of a cloth thing happening on the front of his armor that I did in. Just wanted to try it out, so I did the pallid bone on the front there. Uh, we've got the same again, really, with the armor being the silver. With um, we've got Gravelord Grey. Uh, and that's on all of the armor pieces and the sword pieces. And at the back, I've done a white um, cape. And I think that's shaded with holy white. It might be runic gray. It looks a bit bluer. Uh, and then just a little bit of flare in the head, uh, head piece. Which will be... I just wanted to try out and see what the color looked like. That's the purple alchemy. That was Lancelot's armor. And we've got the Holy Grail. This one was really, uh, really challenging to paint. Again, it's that rubbery texture, so I couldn't get paint to stick properly to the marbling. Um, so this ended up. So I've done a very light gray wash in all the recesses, and then I dry brushed white over uh, to just make those details pop a bit. The gold is the Vallejo gold. I thinned it with a bit of water to make it um, smooth and sort of spread evenly. And it had, took about four coats to get a good even uh, coverage. And I've just dabbed some blue and red uh, gems there. So yeah, it's nice. Turned out pretty well, I think. Um, then we have the siege engines, so there are 12 of these guys, 
and I just painted them with um, I think that's the hardened leather um, just all the way around and then uh, just to give them a bit of extra color there's the blue stopper there pallid bone for the catapult arm and then sort of a black dot in the middle representing a rock and they're all pretty much the same. And then we have the Picts. So they are these guys. Now they're looking a bit shiny because I've um, glossed them in satin. I'll probably go back over them with a matte gloss. Um, so they are just a blue cloak. Uh, that would be the uh, Hive of Blue. Um, and they were pretty much just grey hair, a bit of gold on the shield, um, just more leather on the boots, and um, just quite a bit of Crusader skin there, and they were all painted the same. They were some of the earlier, well, these were the earlier figures that I did, so looking at them now, I think the quality isn't that fantastic. Um, but there we go. And then we have the Saxons, quite happy with how these guys turned out, particularly the shields. So there's a little bit of metallic on the front, and then I just painted over them with brown. And I went with a green. Um, I don't remember what green that was. I think it was, it's not camo cloak, like I could have used camo cloak, but I didn't own it at that time, so I think it's just the orc skin. But I diluted it down with um, something else, I cannot remember what. Um, there may be a, a video of me painting these on my channel, go have a look, see if you can find it if you're interested. Um, went with the orange beards there, so they'd be the fire giant orange for the hair. Um, and yeah, I think these guys turned out quite nice. They just need a, um, a matte finish rather than the gloss. So that is all of the figures. Another one of these guys. Let me know in the comments which one was your favourite. Uh, mine is King Arthur. I quite like the red. I love the shield detail. It was a fun paint but quite easy. It wasn't too technically challenging. Um, the line work was the, the hardest bit to get right. And, um, and around all of the gaps in the dragon to make it shaded right. So I think this guy was my favorite. Let me know in the comments which one was yours. Or probably my second favorite is this guy, Lancelot's armor. That was very fun to do. So yeah, now I'm looking forward to playing this with all my friends in its full glory. Um, Final sort of analysis of speed paint is it is oops sorry smacking my camera around um, it's perfect for new painters uh, that you know, like me don't really know what I'm doing that much but want game ready figures um, that you know you can table this and it looks amazing um, and it doesn't require that much effort um, so in my view. Uh, speed paint and a little bit of knowledge and I'm just yeah really impressed with the with the product so that is it for now uh, like this video if you want to see more content like this and uh, subscribe and yeah let me know what you think of these figures see ya